Lustig. Hey and welcome to Wine Decoded. My name's Paul Kahn. I'm the chief wine hacker here at Wine Decoded. And first things first, a big thank you to you for coming and joining the Wine Decoded community. We're really looking forward to sharing all of the tips and tricks that we've learned making, drinking, playing with wine over the last 27 to 28, 29 years. And we're gonna kick off today with the first of five sessions that are available to you and only members who have joined up to the Wine Decoded community. We're gonna be talking about tasting wine and what we've discovered through completing 17 vintages working at the likes of Yarra Yearing and Yearing Station across in Burgundy, over in Champagne, and now making our own Wine Decoded wine is that people tend to overcomplicate tasting wine. We're gonna simplify it, we're not gonna oversimplify it. There's stuff that you have to learn, but we're gonna keep it at a, a, a level where by the time you've finished, you'll be hopefully just a little bit closer to tasting like a winemaker. So kicking off, there are five things that you need to know to taste wine well. And we've broken them up into, into these parts. The first one we're gonna to explore today is depth and length. Now we're gonna do this by tasting wine. Do not worry, if you need to come back to this, you can always come back at any time. The video will be here for you. The instructions around what you'll need, which is really simple, wine glasses, bit of water, and a couple of little empty tonic bottles or alike, will be on the page uh, for you to read. So what we're really about to do is a cut down version of learning to taste wine just as you would if you were doing a winemaking degree. And what we always do in these circumstances is taste in context and with contrast. And this is something that you should really look to do in the future as much as possible. It means having at least two glasses of wine in front of you when you're tasting. Well, why? Because it allows you to compare them and through comparing them, it's easier to pick up the little differences that are in there, whether one's a bit sweeter, one's a bit fruitier, one's got a bit more acid in it, or one's got a bit more oak in it. It's very hard, even for experienced professionals, to taste wine, stand alone, and pick all of these things out in a very definitive way. By having two glasses side by side, it makes your life so much easier. You'll learn about wine faster, and it will be easier to learn about wine. End result, you'll enjoy drinking it more, which is what we want to get to um, at the end of the day. So, we'll be tasting in context and with contrast today, and we're gonna be talking about the first of the five tasting elements that we mentioned, the depth and length of wine. We're talking about the concentration of the aromas the depth of the aromas, the concentration and depth of the flavors, and the length of the aromas and the length of the flavors. So, do they travel from the very front of your nose all the way back to the back of your nose and linger? Do they travel from the very tip of your tongue across the middle of your tongue and palate and through to the back of your palate and then linger for a long time? That's a wine with length. If it's short, the flavors stop abruptly. Sometimes there's a little gap in the middle and we call that being a donut where there's no flavor in the middle of your palate. So let's get into it. We're gonna prepare a couple of glasses of wine. This is dead easy. So first things first, we will crack a bottle of white wine. We've got a very simple dry white here, a clean wine. It's an El Barino. Uh, from Rias Baxas in, uh, in Spain. That's great fun wine, kind of somewhere between a Chardonnay and a Semillon if you, if you want to call it that, and really good fun. So, in your first glass, just pour a glass of wine. No harder than that. In your second glass, pour about half as much. Well, that looks about right. No need to be too accurate as long as you're ballpark. Then grab some water. We've got a trusty carafe of water here. Pour that into the glass. Make sure your water's of decent quality. If you're in Adelaide, maybe consider some bottled water, at least filtered water. 
Um, give that second glass a bit of a swirl to mix the water and the wine together. Now what we're gonna do is firstly smell these wines and then we're gonna taste them. To smell them, we wanna give them a bit of a swirl. Now swirling, you know, when you've had a lot of practice, easy. When you haven't, good tip, stick the glass on the table and just make little circles and that will help spin the wine around. By doing that, it helps the aromas liberate from the liquid and it's easier to smell the wine and you get a more intense aroma. When you're smelling these wines, you wanna stick your honker in and you wanna have a good deep inhale through your nose. Sometimes it helps to close your eyes because that helps you concentrate just on the aroma. So give yourself a moment just to chill out. Hopefully you're doing this with a couple of friends and you can share your experience as well. So first thing, swell. This is the 100% wine glass, no water in this at all. And then big inhale, close your eyes and concentrate on the intensity of the smell and the length of the smell. So first class, getting good depth of aroma, good length of aroma. There's some lovely fruit characters in there, a bit of spice and a few other things. Don't worry about describing anything else really, but just concentrate on that depth and length of aroma. Now, you've got that one locked in your head and, and what the depth and length of aroma was like. Go to the second glass and this time, same thing, give it a swell, big sniff, close your eyes and try and compare that back to the depth and length of aroma of the first glass. So instantaneously, the fruit characters, the depth of the fruit and the length of the fruit of the glass that's half water is much, much less intense uh, and much shorter, much, much less length uh, than the, the first, first glass. So you're starting to get a bit of an idea of depth and length in terms of aroma. And let's be honest, if you don't have good depth and length in your wine in terms of flavor, you're kind of getting ripped off and you may as well just be drinking water. Let's now go on to tasting the wine. We're gonna smell it and then taste it. It's important to smell it first because a lot of the flavor is actually derived from smelling it, but not all of it. So you will see a difference between these two. We'll go back to the first glass, it's 100% wine, and we'll take our time, again, concentrating on the flavor and the intensity of the flavors and the length of the flavors along your tongue, whether it be the front or the middle or the back of your tongue, how much depth and how much length of flavor is in there. So quick sniff. And then taste. You can swish it around your mouth a bit in the process. And again, we see here, good depth and length of flavor. I'm seeing a lovely mid-weight wine, um, lovely flavors, lovely fresh wine. What happens when we go to the wine with half water, half wine? Well, it's gonna be as you'd expect, but this is a really good palate training exercise. So grab the glass, again, big sniff, taste, swish it around your mouth, concentrate compared to the first one. This is again, this tasting in context and with contrast. Compare it to the depth of flavor and the length of flavor that you had in the first glass. So yours will be basically like mine. Bit thin, bit insipid, doesn't really have the depth of flavor, doesn't really have the length of flavor. The flavor just stops all of a sudden and disappears. You're left with kind of a slight acid water kind of character. Sort of like when you put a couple of drops of lemon in, in, in water and that's, that's about it for me in this case. So what we've just done here is start to help you create in your head a little bit of a central reference around what good depth and length of aroma and flavor is in a wine. Now if you do this 
every time you taste a wine, you concentrate on that depth and length of flavor and aroma, over time, you will get an idea of what good depth and length is for any given wine style. So you're creating that central reference in your head that we rely on because there is no machine really that tastes wine and tells us whether it has good depth and length. Well, not yet at least. So we need to create that central reference in our head. Having done that, if you'd like, go and do it again with some red wine. Always interesting to see the differences for both whites and reds and, and to kick off doing that. It's so easy to come back and do this uh, again and repeat the exercise just to help you dial in again as to what depth and length is. Um, so yeah, come back at any time, watch this video again, try the experiment again. You're only using a few meals of, of, of wine and, and losing it because you can drink the, uh, the full strength one and enjoy it uh, at any time. So. That's depth and length. We wanna now do a little bit of prep for a session in the future. So in this session we were talking about depth and length. We're gonna talk about freshness and oxidation in a future session. And this is where these two little bottles of wine come in. Now don't worry if you don't have everything prepared now. You can always, as I said, come back to this video. You'll see some instructions on this page as to what to do. This is for, again, that session in the future. So first things first, grab one of your bottles. We've, we've just got a, a Schweppes tonic water bottle here. If you've got a lot of people that are doing this together, you'll need about 50 mils of wine per person, so you've got enough to taste it a few times and, and get the idea of what we're gonna talk about uh, when we get to it. So first bottle, what we're trying to do is make sure this doesn't oxidize at all, so we, don't, we want as little oxygen getting into the wine and as little oxygen in the bottle by the time we finish. So simply just pour in a bottle full of wine. Do it gently so it doesn't glug, so you've got less, less oxygen or less aeration taking place. Fill it right to the top. And there she is. Whoop! Bit of spillage in the village. Uh, wrong lid. Let's get this other lid. Seal it up tight. I don't mind that it's that full. Um, that's probably a good thing. Less oxygen in it. The next wine, next bottle, I want you to fill about half full. So this is a 300 ml bottle, that'll give you 150 mils roughly and enough for three people to do the, the tasting exercise. It's not important to have volumes like this as long as you've got enough for the number of people that are gonna be tasting with you. So let's cap that one up. What I want you to do to this one is give it a really good shake. So what we're doing here is mixing all of the oxygen in the bottle with the wine and we're starting it oxidizing and that'll, that'll be something that we can taste uh, when we get to it. So we've done that, taken the cap off, we'll stick the cap back on again, give it another shake. Job's done. Put these aside somewhere safe and we'll tell you when to pull them out again. So they're, they're prepared and ready to go. In our very next session, we're gonna talk about balance and for the balance tasting, you're gonna need a few other things. They're listed on the page. Basically, another bottle of wine, three glasses each, and some sugar, and some sort of form of acid. Look, worst case scenario, if you've got a lemon on hand uh, to add some lemon juice, that'd be awesome. Um, if you can get a hold of it, get a hold of some citric acid or some tartaric acid. Um, we can send you some tartaric acid with an order. Um, just shout out and let us know you want a little little, little sample to, to do the, uh, the tasting revolution for, with wine decoded and, and we'll put a, a few grams in there that'll be enough to get you through the next exercise. Look, I really hope you enjoyed our kickoff into the wine decoded tasting revolution. Today we talked about the importance of tasting in context and with contrast and we talked about depth and length and the importance of depth and length in wine. In a nutshell, if your wine hasn't got depth and length, you're kind of being ripped off and getting water with a bit of alcohol and acid in it rather than something that's got good flavour and good aroma. Please uh, head to the bottom of the page, leave us a comment, ask any questions that, that, uh, that you have. We'll try and, and get back to you with, with answers for those. 
In a few days time, you'll receive uh, an email letting you know the next wine bite uh, and where we're looking at part two of the Wine Decoded Tasting Revolution, Balance is available and there'll be another video just like this one where we're gonna go through, taste some wine together, share our thoughts and hopefully uh, get some great feedback from you as to what you thought and, and you'll be one step closer to having the complete picture of how to taste wine just like we do as winemakers, show judges and experienced professionals in the wine industry. Thanks again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers and bye for now from Paul at Wine Decoded. Cheers guys.